Hey everyone, I'm Nitij and today we are diving into an exciting project that combines the power of React with the sleek styling of Tailwind CSS. We are going to create a stunning responsive timeline, a component that you will find useful in a wide range of applications. So whether you are showcasing a company's history or any event sequences or maybe project milestones, this tutorial will give you all the tools you need to make it happen by creating a timeline component. So this is how the project will look like in the end and I will walk you through the process of building this dynamic timeline component. We will be focusing on creating a design that looks great and will also add some cool interactive features to enhance the user experience. Alright, so without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the code. So this is the timeline component that we will be modifying to build the timeline. This is app.js and this is the event data that is going to be integrated or bind with our timeline component. So as you can see, this is just test data, but for your real world scenarios, you can integrate your timeline component with real time data or maybe integrated with the data fetched from any database interaction. So before we start to create the actual timeline, first let's think about what we are going to do. So the first thing that we need to do is to add a circle in the beginning and the end of the timeline and then for each event we are going to add a pillar adjacent to it so it should be like circle and then pillar and now based on the direction of the event it could be either left or right based on the direction we are going to show the event so for example let me just tab it out so if the event should be on the left side then we need to show the event on the left side um, let me just check if i can get this right okay so if the events dot direction is left then the event will show on the left side of the pillar if it's on the right then it will show on the right side of the pillar so similarly we can have multiple events with different directions like this and this is how we are going to create the timeline but hold on we are going to add individual circles between each pillar as well to give it a sleek design look like this okay so i think now you have understood what we are going to do so let's get started with creating the individual component for all of these items let me just comment it out first and now let's first create the component for our circle component so um, const circle equals to um, it's going to be an arrow function so we have to return a div now to style this div in the form of a circle first i'm just going to add the class name of rounded to full let's set the width and height so i'm going to set fixed width and height so w4 and h4 for width and height let's set the background so i'm going to set the background as blue 500 and let's also uh, center align this circle by adding mx auto so our circle is created now similar to the circle let's create the pillar as well so let's name it as pillar and the pillar should be um, a div but it should be long and not rounded so i'm just going to set the top and uh, the top and bottom as rounded so uh, rounded t should be full and rounded b or rounded bottom should be full so these are all the tailwinds utility classes which i'm using right now to style these individual components and mx auto should be there as well let's set the background as blue we have to change the um, the width so let's set the width as 
2 and let's you know remove the height because the height should be automatic based on the um, event cards height and what else we need to do let's set the edge to full actually okay i think that's all we need to do for the pillar and now it's time to create the component for our event card so const event card equals to an arrow function component let's return the event card div but we also need the values for the card heading and subheading so you can add more items to your event card based on your requirements for the purpose of this video i'm just going to show a sample heading and subheading for the event now over here i'm just going to create a div first for the card container and first let's add the basic styling so class name equals to flex and flex call to arrange all the items in a single column let's add the gap y so gap y can be added as true let's add the border let's also show shadow and i am going to set it as rounded borders so rounded excel let's set the let's set the padding as p4 and i think that is pretty much everything we need now let's add the div for the heading and subheading so div this is for heading and this is for subheading so heading and then um hold on sub heading right now it's time to style these two divs so for heading the class name can be text blue uh, let's use 800 and font bold and then text large let's also add the bottom border so border b and for subheading we can style it um, differently from the heading so with a smaller text so text sm and then let's set the text color as gray instead of the default black all right so our event card is also built now it's time to modify this timeline component and use these three components to build our timeline so in the timeline we are going to get the events as the prop so let's remove this timeline text for the timeline container i'm just going to use the flex box or flex model so flex and flex call to arrange them in a single column let's provide the gap between the circle and the pillars so gap and then y then three should be enough width should be i mean whatever width the container needs to take and then let's set some margin as well for top and bottom so i'm y4 now first based on this design we have to um, add the circle in the beginning and in the end so let's just do that so circle two circles now in the middle we are going to iterate over all the events so events dot map event and then key so from this function okay hold on i think i need to provide a bracket over here and then one over here as well now let's add a fragment as the enclosing container for our items and for the fragment we can provide a key because this is going to be a list otherwise react will complain about it now to render the events and the pillar in this format we need to check first the direction where the event needs to be rendered for example if the event needs to be rendered on the right side then there should be nothing on the left side of the pillar but there should be the event on the right side of the pillar similarly if the event should be rendered on the left side with a direction of left then there should be nothing on the right side and this can be achieved by using a um, css grid so let's do that i am first going to create a div container with class name so um, this is going to be 
a grid box with three columns so grid and then grid calls we can define the columns like um, this one unit and then auto and then one unit so center one is auto because we want the pillar to be um, placed automatically in the center now let's add the gap between the events and the pillar so gap x2 and let's also set items as center and then finally mx auto for the entire container of the event and the pillars now we will check if the event dot direction um, if it's left hold on if it's left then we will um, then we will render the event card so event card and then let's provide the props as well so heading equals to uh, event dot heading and then subheading equals to event dot subheading right if this is not the case if this is uh, if the direction is not left then we will simply render an empty div all right let me just format it and after the event um, after the left side event we have to render a pillar so pillar and then we have to render the right side event if it's there so if the event or direction is right then we will render the event otherwise we will render the empty div now there is one more thing that we need to do and that is to add circles after each event and we only need to do that if the event is not the last event so if um, hold on so key is going to contain the index values for each events so we can simply check the value of key so if key is less than events dot length minus one then we can render the circle right i think that is everything we need to do now let's run this code and test it so i'm just going to execute the command npm start to run this react app locally so now the app is running locally but over here i can only see two circles and none of the events seem to be rendering let's check what's the issue over here so we have the events.map and then okay i think we need to return this fragment now let's save the code okay so now we have all the events but there is only the circle and the event and then yep no pillars so let's check why the pillars are not there i'm just going to inspect it so it took me a while to find out what is wrong with this code so the problem is we have to use an underscore with the um, with the units of columns that we are using with grid calls utility class of tailwind now let's save it and check so now we have our pillars so everything is looking good now it's time to add some animations and further styling to this entire timeline structure so the first thing that i will do is i will add gradients to the circle and the pillar so let's do that i am going to use the bg gradient utility class um, let's set the gradient direction to right and for the colors i'm just going to write from blue so blue is going to be the first gradient color and teal is going to be the second gradient color so blue to teal 500 and i'm going to remove this bg blue from over here in order to prevent it from overriding our gradient similarly we can use a gradient for the pillar as well but instead of going from left to right we can go from top to bottom to make it more visible now let's save it so here are the gradients now let's add some hover effects for our event card so the first thing that i will do is i will add the transition and duration classes so duration should be 300 the um, the effect should be is in out for the animation and we are going to apply it on the transform so and this should be applied 
with mouse hover so with mouse hover we are going to update the translate y value so translate y let's set the value as one also let's change the shadow on hover so on hover we are going to set the shadow as to excel so when the mouse is not hovering then the shadow would be md or medium but when the mouse is hovering then it should be um, two times of excel value now let's save it okay so this is how the animation is working and there you have it an interactive timeline built in react and styled with tailwind css i hope you found this tutorial helpful and that it inspires you to create amazing things in your projects if you have any questions thoughts or suggestions feel free to drop them in the comments below i love seeing what you come up with and learning from your experiences as well also don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials like this i am nitej and it's been a pleasure guiding you through this project thanks for watching and happy coding